in as we've got our players seated in front of us, getting ready to go. And that Alolan, Alolan Persian on the desk uh, looking pretty nice. Yeah, it's a big, big hint to what's to come, maybe. <laughs> uh, Alolan Persian now accessible in Scarlet and Violet, and maybe in the next uh, regulation as well. As you can see here, we've got Luca uh, Celebi on the right side of the screen here, and we can go through their accomplishments. Uh, the top 16 at the recent EUIC in 2023, then uh, Liverpool Regionals, a top 16 there, and a world's day two competitor uh, in the 2022 World Championships. And then finally, with that Turin special event, uh, a previous champion, previous champion, uh, looking to go. maybe defend a title, reclaim a uh, title in From Turin off. in the yeah. uh, in the home country. Of course, and I, I've got to apologise in advance. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce this name, but Jokan going for uh, you know a couple of other achievements as well. Um, so you know, definitely a competitor that. Uh, Luca's going to have to watch out for. Yeah, definitely. I mean, both players very well established and obviously having really ex excellent runs into this tournament today in such a, a tough field of players. They've got to this stage where they are very close to clinching this day two to get into that next stage of the tournament. Um, obviously, being the current or well, past Turin Special Event champion uh, does uh, give you a bit of an advantage going into this one, but you can't discount anything from the other side of the field. No, definitely. And, you know, it does put a little bit of pressure on the line as well. You know, you've got to be thinking, has like, hang on a second, back uh, back in 2017, I had a really good run, but uh, definitely doesn't guarantee everything. When you come into these tournaments, you've definitely got to, you know, clear your mind, as we were saying before, and make sure that your head is in the right space, especially at this late stage in the tournament. These players have already played eight rounds of Swiss already, and there's a lot uh, left to play, so to speak. Yeah, and we can see Joaquin's team here is um, the, the flutter main. Oh, I do apologize. I think this is Lucas' team. Sorry. Apologies about that, Ben. So, uh, Lucas' team is going to be the flutter main, the Among Us, the Chi Yu, Garados, the Ting Lu, and the Iron Hand. So, very familiar kind of six Pokemon that we've seen uh, throughout Regulation C. And um, just some different choices here throughout the team. Yeah, I mean, we saw quite a lot of Gyarados carrying Protect on uh, their set where uh, Luca opting for the Helping Hand there. So uh, a little bit of a difference there in terms of the uh, defensive capability, but also the offensive capabilities of this Gyarados. And I'm looking at the Terra Fairy choice on that as well, which is something that we don't often see a little bit different to normal uh, as we see uh, Joaquin's team on your screen right now and again another familiar combination that we saw I think really just last round with uh, looks like the same uh, kind of composition that Arash was running. Yeah just minus the Dragonite here and uh, um, opting for the Gyarados over that slot and I think it gives it a bit more well it's just a different kind of um stability to the team. You've got that nice core in there with the Gyarados, the Amoongus, and the Chiyu, kind of that firewater grass core right. at the center of the team. And then around that, you've got the Iron Hands, which we've seen do so well throughout the day here today. Uh, the King Gambit as well, which is one of Shauna's big, big <laughs> favorites and um, a big threat, you know? Fire terror typing on it as well, not something that you see too often on the King Gambit in this format. And then that Fluttermane as well, which uh, is running the Protect Moonblast, Shadow Ball, and the Dazzling Gleam with the booster energy. That's uh, certainly going to be a threat to behold. Uh, really interesting to see a couple of terror choices there that are different on uh, Joaquin's side of the field where you've got that terror normal on the Amoongus, so it's a good way to take away any sort of type type advantage. But also you've got that terror water on the Iron Hands, which really comes down to usually a, a choice between Terra Grass and Terra Fire, uh, but instead going for the Terra Water, wanting to do something slightly different defensively. Yeah, it is an interesting choice um, because like you say, you normally do see that Terra Grass is predominantly the main choice or more often than not recently, we're seeing that Terra Fire is a choice there to kind of get around the issues of things like Will-O-Wisp that really slow you down and, and stop you being able to kind of get the damage that you require from that Pokemon out onto the field. Field. Absolutely, and uh, you know that's going to make a big difference. But if you are watching along with us right now, do show your support for these great players that we've got. Uh, you know who you want to uh, be advancing to day two of this competition. Maybe uh, friends and family.
family back home that are watching along as well. Yeah, and um, I think it's always good to get involved at this stage. It's interesting to see where the audience at home think the win is going to come from and who they're supporting as well. Um, I think that the team concepts are very similar uh, on both sides of the field, so mm. it's, it's a real kind of... It's going to be how the, both players kind of go in with their leads, don't overcompensate, don't put themselves in precarious positions where right. they have to adjust. I mean, we saw in that last game uh, where the, the adjustment in that first game for a rash where he had to switch in the Dragonite, it really put him on the back foot and made it difficult to come back. You kind of don't want to put yourself in that similar situation going into this game on. Absolutely. As King Gambit and Flutamane come out for Joaquin and Luca leading off with Iron Hands and Ting Lu. So an immediate uh, Ting Lu on the field is something that the Flutamane definitely doesn't really want to see, although it is going to be putting super effective damage onto both Pokemon on Luca's side of the field. That Vessels of Ruin ability is going to be stopping it from doing too much. And Ting Lu, certainly if it's carrying the uh, the Heavy Slam uh, will be able to do a lot of damage in reply to uh, the Fluttermane on Joaquin's side of the field. Yeah, and you're, with that booster energy as well, you're in a position where you don't really want to switch it out because you lose the boost that you've mm. just got access to. So you really want to make and take advantage of that right now. You probably don't want to terrestrialize though because I think, like you say, you're in a prime position to probably get knocked out. But the Gyarados coming in here for Joaquin and he is going to reduce the attack power at least on that Tingly this turn. But opting for a protect rather than diving in straight away and going for an attack. Makes sense in this stage of the competition. You definitely don't want your Fluttermane to be going down to a stray attack. As a oh. full switch comes in from the Gyarados and is going to be able to do a nice amount of damage there. Of course, Iron Hands more trained in its physical offenses rather than its special offenses. So not doing too much damage, even though it's four times super effective against that Gyarados. And Amoongus joins the field and certainly something that that Fluttermane is not going to be particularly happy to see. No, definitely not. I think the Flutterman now in a position where it is going to be threatened by the Spore. It is going to be disrupted a little bit by the Rage Powder. The Amoongus really doesn't mind sitting in front of a Flutterman for, you know, as long as it wants, really. It can go for um, a lot of disruption Spore into the Gyarados as well. But you have to watch out from that Gyarados. If you are going for some disruption moves, then you have to be wary of the taunt that can come out and really mm. slow you down. Uh, but you can utilize the Ting Lu here to maybe get some damage off onto that Flutterman slot, which you think probably has to switch out like we do see it go for here. Absolutely, and a follow-up of terrestrialization coming out there from Luca's side of the field is going to be that Ting Lu uh, going for the Terra Water there, so not going to be taking too much damage from the Gyarados that just switched in for, from Joaquin here. And we see the Taunt coming in to that Amoongus, so no Spores, no Rage Powders, no Protects coming out for at least a few turns here. But Luca predicting the switch on the Flutter Main is going to be getting a Ruination into that King Gambit. Pollen Puff following up onto that Ting Lu, but not affecting it because it is still at full HP. Yeah, just making sure that, you know, I think reading that the taunt was going to come out, not having a turn warrior Amoongus isn't going to be doing anything and just making sure if that in any case there is a waterfall potentially coming out from that Gyarados or an mm. attack from that Flutterman. If it does stay on the field, then at least you're kind of keeping its HP to a, a, a healthy point with that Pollen Puff and you're not wasting any turns. So King Gamut coming back onto the field now, it is in a bit of a precarious position where it is going to be threatened by potentially a stomping tantrum from this King Ting Lu here. Um, and the Among is still in a good position to kind of support with that Pollen Puff as well because it's not locked out after that taunt from the Gyarados. Certainly not as the Fluttermane does rejoin the field here and the Amoongus is the one that's going to be leaving the field so resetting that taunt for later going to be coming in and able to spore if that Gyarados is no longer on the field. Gyarados going for a Thunder Wave into the Ting Lu just trying to uh, both reduce its speed but also uh, get that full paralysis out. Not going to be impacting this turn though uh, a stomping tantrum going into the flutter main doing a little bit of damage and I feel like if you're on Joaquin's side of the field, you've taken quite a lot of damage. You're not really gained too much ground. It's really time to switch things up and maybe go on the offensive here. Yeah, I think you've got to start getting some damage out onto Lucas' side of the field. Uh, Lucas quite comfortable at the moment. He's quite happy to just have this Ting Lu sitting here. The Gyarados isn't really putting on too much pressure at all. We're mm. going to see it switch out again, so we're not going to see any offensive pressure from that side of the field, but that's because of the pressure that the Iron Hands is putting on. But like you say, I think uh, Lucas is really ahead in this match and Joaquin needs to start playing catcher. 
Absolutely, and catching up with a Moonblast coming out onto the Iron Hands, doing just a little less than 50%, thanks for the Vessels of Ruin ability on that Ting Lu, counteracting the Beads of Ruin coming in from that Chi Yu. A Vault Switch does target down the Chi Yu, not going to be doing too much damage, but, uh, you know, Every little bit of damage does help, especially with a Pokemon like Chi Yu that you want to remove from the field. Uh, Chi Yu coming in from Luca's side of the field and a Ruination coming into Chi Yu on Joaquin's side of the field. There's lots of Pokemon that are uh, in common in this match, I think. Yeah, we've got a lot of the same Pokemon <laughs> on both sides of the field. But the big difference, I think, here is for Luca is that Ting Lu that's pretty free to kind of just sit on the field. It's supporting things on his side of the field from big special attacks. And you can right. see here, even a double up from both of these strong special attackers on Joaquin's side, it is able to take those pretty comfortably and it allows the room for his own Chiyu to get that nasty mm. plot up, put itself in a really dominating position going into this next turn where it is likely going to be able to pick up a knockout, if not two knockouts on Joaquin's side of the field. Yeah, a lot of Joaquin's Pokemon are sitting pretty low at the moment. Only Gyarados would be able to switch in and take something like a heat wave in this position. Uh, we saw there rounding out the turn, the Ting Lu wasn't able to move because of that paralysis coming out from the Thunder Wave of that Gyarados. So a uh, real testament to why those sort of turns are really important as you play through the game. A dazzling gleam plus a dark pulse coming out from Hooking side of the field, but it's just not enough damage as a heat wave does pick up a KO on that Fluttermane. Yeah, and it's not getting the return for Hakeem like he wanted, unfortunately. But the Ting Lu is paralyzed and so not oh. going to be able to get the potential knockout on that Chiyu, so it does get another turn. Another turn indeed, and another turn of the leftovers recovery too. Uh, kind of looking like the heat wave from Chi Yu on Joaquin's side of the field isn't even able to sort of counteract that leftovers, or at least the leftovers is counteracting the heat wave, if I say it yeah. the other way around. Yeah, and I think with that water terror typing, it is really benefiting the Tinglu right now. The Gyarados coming in, getting another Intimidate off, but really in an awkward position where it is going to be picked up by whatever this Chi Yu does on uh, Lucas' side of the field, but actually opting for the Protect this mm. turn rather than going for a big attack. And I like that because you do get the opportunity for Chi Yu on Joaquin's side of the field to pick up that Ting Lu. And now all of Joaquin's, or at least Joaquin's Chi Yu, is going to be doing full damage to Lucas' side of the field. Uh, the Protect, though, is going to block the Waterfall coming out from that Gyarados. And we're going to get uh, Luca being able to switch in that Iron Hands to put on a little bit of pressure with Fake Out. Yeah, great spot there. Getting rid of the Vessel of Rune is going to just benefit you, especially after that nasty plot. Now you're going to be able to do the damage that you really want. You get the Iron Hands onto the field now. Mm. You put the, the Gyarados under pressure, and you've also got the ability to go for another pivot out if you want with that Volt Switch. You can do that this turn. You can maybe pick up the Gyarados here with a Dark Pulse and pivot out onto the Chi Yu, potentially picking up two knockouts or whatever comes in on that Gyarados slot, you're going to do some big damage to. Big damage is probably what we're going to be seeing here with a... Oh, actually, not quite. Not quite just yet. Protect <laughs> coming out onto the Chi Yu on Hookie's side of the field. Dark Pulse following up onto that King Gambit. Not quite enough to pick up the KO on it on the switch in. And a wild charge going into the Protect. So uh, maybe jump the gut a little bit on uh, big damage, but I, I, I feel like it's coming. It is coming. A nice <laughs> reposition there from Joaquin. You know, the Protect on Chi Yu doesn't want to give it up too freely and wants to reposition, getting that King Gambit on the field. Now, it does have access to Sucker Punch, of course. It will be going before anything but Chi Yu part dark typing anyway, not really going to go down to that sucker punch and going to be in a position where it can potentially fire off a heat wave or, you know, I think the one Pokemon that can survive everything as a <laughs> heat wave does fire out is that Iron Hands. And a heat wave following up, getting a double KO. Luca taking two knockouts this turn and it's only the Gyarados in the back now for Joaquin and it's got a lot of work to do here, a little bit of an uphill, uh, an up waterfall battle maybe. Definitely up the waterfall is what <laughs> we need to see from the Gyarados. It's probably a little bit too much for Joaquin here. And I think Luca's played this extremely well. He's positioned his, his Chi Yu excellently in this game. He's mm. taken the opportunity when he's had the, the chance to get that nasty plot up and he's not really um, taken any massive risks. I think the Protect, like you said before, to get rid of that Ting Lu is a really smart play. So you can really take advantage of that massive special attacking stat that it does have access to and making it very difficult for Joaquin to get any sort of foothold in this game. But 
we are about to see a terrestrialization at this end point of the game, and it is a Gyarados, <laughs> and it will be terrestrializing into that steel typing, which is not really the most preferable typing in front of a fire and a fighting type Pokemon. Not at all, and we will see the training of these two Pokemon Gyarados being slower than the Chi Yu on Luca's side of the field, and Luca going to be getting that Dark Pulse into the Gyarados, is going to be able to pick up the knockout, and Luca taking game one of round nine. Yeah, really convincing win there. You know, I think the way that he utilized the Iron Hands probably was the big thing in that match. Yeah. I think he wasn't really going for the, the maybe the, the obvious kind of support options like the Faker that it's got access to and opting for the, the Volt Switch, which was the pivot every time. You know, he wasn't really prioritizing the damage at that stage. He was setting up his ball position for those later stages in the game. And I think that's what really kind of shows through here where he's that dominant. And uh, Joaquin obviously probably picked up a lot of information in that match, how oh. Luca's kind of going to try and um, line up into this one. Now he, it's, everything's back on his side. He's got the job to bring this match, tie it up to take it to a game three. Um, and I do feel like he's got the Pokemon to do it. I mean, going into this next match, if you are hey, Joaquin, uh, ben, what, what would you kind of do to adjust going into this next one? The big thing I'm looking at is that Iron Hands on Joaquin's side of the field. It wasn't present in uh, the last game, and certainly King Gambit really struggled to switch into certainly a boosted Chi Yu in uh, that match where you know, Iron Hands would have had a little bit of a better time. And of course, it is that uh, Terra Water, I believe, onto the Iron Hands, so maybe you can get a, a little bit of resistance to that heat wave and use its uh, attack boost. Uh, oh, sorry, use its typing to its advantage. And of course, looking at that Ting Lu that stayed on the field for so long and did quite a lot of damage with those ruinations on the switch-ins, uh, you know, if, you, if it doesn't go for the Terra, you're pressuring with a fighting move. If it does go for the Terra, you're pressuring with an electric move. Yeah, and like you mentioned, we are going to see the Iron Hands from Joaquin. And he is leading it out with that Gyarados. And then on Luca's side, he is leading with his Iron Hands and that Ting Lu once again. And it's a really nice adjustment here, I think, for bringing the Iron Hands in. And now uh, both of these players are going to have to think, you know, whether or not to go for those fake outs, whether or not to carry on uh, pivoting. But actually, uh, looking down at the team list again, Joaquin's uh, Iron Hands doesn't, in fact, have the fake out. In fact, it is one of those Swords Dance Detect sets. Yeah, and uh, we do see the, the Detect. So just protecting this turn as a Waterfall comes out from the Gyarados into the Tingle. Do good damage as a Ruination into that Iron Hands. Blocked by the Detect here, and we are going to see a Volt Switch from Luca's Iron Hands. Once again into the Gyarados, doing respectable damage as he is going to be able to bring something else onto the field. A really nice Volt Switch target, knowing when a Pokemon doesn't have the ability to go for a protect sometimes even if it does less damage you definitely want to be targeting into that slot because the pivoting is the thing that you're going for yeah and now we do see that Amoongus hit the field but the thing with Joaquin's uh, Iron Hands is it does have that water terror typing and it also has access to the safety goggles so it really isn't going to worry too much about what that Amoongus can do to pressure it with those spores you've also got the Gyarados out in the field right now so you can taunt into that slot and not really worry too much while you can still pressure that Ting Lu if it doesn't terrestrialize with mm. that part dark typing with your big fighting type attacks. And the one thing that Wahin hasn't had uh, subjected to in this match is any Intimidate like he has been doing to Lucas side of the field. And that's a really good point because Intimidate would really slow down this Iron Hands on Joaquin's side of the field. And especially with that Swords Dance, uh, when Luca isn't bringing the Pokemon, or uh, currently isn't bringing the Pokemon, uh, we'll have to see later in the match, that do carry Intimidate. It's going to be really hard to stop if Joaquin is able to get it set up. Yeah, and now we do see the terrestrialization on Joaquin's uh, Iron Hands. It is going to turn into that Water Terror typing. So it is going to go for that Sword Stance as well as the Gyarados goes for the Taunt into the Amoongus. And we do see the Iron Hands on Lucas' side of the field now enter the battlefield. And the one thing you would say is a bit of a detriment to Joaquin's uh, Iron Hands is the fact that now it is weak to the Iron Hands on Luca's side of the field in a water type. Yeah, it may have been a little bit too early to go for that Terra Water, maybe wanted to keep his own type for a little bit longer. But, you know, I'm sure there's a game plan in the back there. We'll have to see how that plays out as the Gyarados does now switch into the Fluttermane while the Amoongus is not able to go for a taunt any longer. A lovely detect there coming out from Iron, Iron Hands on Joaquin 
right-hand side of the field. And a Volt Switch again. Luca showing uh, the Volt Switch turn after turn and not really keeping the iron hands on the field for too long. Yeah, and I think that's a nice thing. I think keeping it just pivoting out and readjusting your board position to get yourself in better situations really is going to benefit him in this match. We do see the clear smog as an option on Ooh. the Amuga, so that can remove those sword stance boosters. It's plus two attack at the moment, so we have mentioned that Luca doesn't have access to Intimidate, but the fact that he's got that clear smog, he is going to be able to nullify any stat boost from the Iron Hands on Joaquin's side of the field. Uh, getting the Ting Lu onto the field as well is pretty nice is the question now, do you go for that water terrestrialization if you are Luca? We're not going to see it this turn. He is going to go for that protect. Definitely wanting to keep himself safe from a potential uh, double target, uh, certainly into uh, the Ting Lu, and a really nice protect there. Uh, Moonblast and Drain Punch both going into that protect. So the Amoongus is going to be clear to do what it wants and going to be sending that clear smog in the direction of the Iron Hands, dropping away those boosts. Yeah, and the nice thing about that player in particular is uh, you keep it the Amoongus on the field, so you can switch the Amoongus out, of course, as soon as it is taunted to reset that taunt but the fact is keeping it on the field like this it is going to tick down those taunt turns eventually yeah. soon and then the flutterman becomes a bit more uh, at risk of being put to sleep and of course if you want to preserve the, the flutterman you've got to switch something else in well you've, you've already got your safety goggles pokemon out on the field so anything coming in will be subjected to a spore putting luca in a really nice position with the amoongus just got to wait out those turns well, the turn's already ended last turn. The taunt is no longer in play there. So the fake out coming into play from that Iron Hands, uh, coming into the field from that Ting Lu, protecting itself from a drain punch coming out from that Iron Hands. The Fluttermane going on the defensive here, going for a protect, uh, really understandable given what you were talking about with the threat of Spore going into really any Pokemon that Joaquin has available. Yeah, too busy talking to you and looking straight <laughs> in your eyes when I was talking about that taunt there to notice. So good job. One of us is paying attention. But now the Fluttermane is going to be subjected to that Spore. Uh, and there's not really the offensive pressure on uh, Joaquin's side of the field to really get rid of that Amoongus effectively here. You know, the Iron Hands mm. hasn't got any way to deal with it very well. The Fluttermane I mean, definitely hasn't. So do you take the risk now to go after the Iron Hands on uh, Lucas' side of the field with your Fluttermane? I and at the cost of that, do you let your Fluttermane I mean go to sleep? Or like we're seeing here, does he preserve it to a little bit later and allow that Gyarados to come in? And depending on the item of the Gyarados, it may be going for a little nap. <laughs> I think it certainly will. Uh, Gyarados holding the Citrus Berry of course I think there was an opportunity maybe a little bit earlier in the game uh, for when the double target went into the Ting Lu for the double target to go into the Amoongus uh, as the taunt wears off and then you've got a lot of damage you've got a lot of pressure onto that Amoongus already and maybe you pressure with you know four attacks might be enough to, <laughs> to knock out that Amoongus Maybe. It might not even be enough at that <laughs> stage because we know how a well defensively built Amoongus is. So we do see a Detect come out from the Iron Hands on Joaquin's side of the field. And we are going to see that Sport into the Gyarados. And we know it is holding that Citrus Berry. So no Lumberry here to protect it from these turns as it goes for a sleep. And it is going to be a guaranteed sleep turn, this next one. It certainly is, and uh, you know, nice that Gyarados gets the opportunity to have a little bit of a nap here. But I, I like the the play here from Joaquin. Uh, the Gyarados is kind of not doing too much in this matchup. Is you know, it's taunting the Amoongus, and that's pretty good. Uh, you, but if you haven't got it taunted. It's definitely, if you haven't got the Amoongus taunted, it's definitely the Pokemon that you want to sleep at the at the time. You definitely more have more value in the damage output that the Fluttermane has available to it. Yeah, and it's a really good call. And I think uh, if you are Joaquin here, you probably do want to just keep that Gyarados on the field until it does wake up so you can utilize that taunt once again to give your uh, Fluttermane a little bit more um, room when it does come onto the field so it's mm. not threatened so much. We do see a sword stance though from Joaquin's uh, Iron Hands. It is going to boost that attack once again with two stages after the sword stance and a wild charge from the Iron Hands on Luca's side of the field doing some respectable damage in return while the sword stance was set up. Yeah, and now the Drain Punch actually becomes a really good option. And I kind of get why the Iron Hands went for the Terra Water, especially with that Intimidate support from the Gyarados. The difference between going for a Wild Charge and a Drain Punch in this situation is actually quite a lot, where Wild Charge is draining your health, or at least incentivizing Wild Charge to, to drain your health, but then you get to Drain Punch back. 
Yeah, and that's a big thing. And I think if you haven't got the Amoongus next to you at all times when you're firing off those wild charges to keep you kind of topped up with that Pollen Puff, you're going to be in a really precarious position here as the Drain Punch comes out from Joaquin's Iron Hands into the Iron Hands on Lucas' side of the field. And this wild charge is, is going to be doing the recoil? enough. Is it going to be enough? It <laughs> is enough. And Lucas' Iron Hands actually goes down to the recoil damage just like you were talking about. And he is going to lose such a pivotal member to his team here. He did so much work in game one. Now game two, uh, that foresight going for the early terror just really makes all of the difference. And, you know, now Chi Yu's entering the field for Luca, but it's in a, in a different position than it was in game two. Amoongus next to it has been taunted and so cannot rage powder away any attacks coming out from Joaquin's side of the field. And that Gyarados is looking pretty threatening to that Chi Yu right now. Yeah, and um, the terrestrialization has been used, so you've not even got the option to kind of get around the waterfall that way. We are seeing a protect here. Uh, the Amoongus likely to go for a clear smog into that uh, Iron Hands this turn to remove those those boosts that it's got through <laughs> the sword stance as we do see a drain punch come out into that GU that has protected nice play there from Luca just to kind of get around this turn as we see that clear smog but this time into the Gyarados just to chip it down a little bit more and probably because the Iron Hands is in range of whatever the GU is going to throw out onto the field whether that be a heat wave at this stage great call there yeah no more damage required onto the Iron Hands here whatsoever and I'm looking at the Gyarados thinking you know is it in range of a dark Dark Pulse, or is it, uh, you know, going to be surviving that with just like a shred of HP left? It's all going to be coming down to that. And the choice, of course, that Luca makes, whether it's the Heat Wave coming in, it's going to be picking up the knockout on that Iron Hands and sending it back to Joaquin. So no more Iron Hands in game two. They have both been removed from each side of the field. But is this Gyarados going to have enough to deal with the Chiyu? Uh, Gyarados, depending on how it's been trained, will fire out a big waterfall now uh, but no actually going for the thunder wave which actually might not be the worst thing to do in the long run of this battle mm. making sure that the chi yu is not moving before anything else probably a smarter play here uh, just making sure that gyarados can go for that combination of waterfall and uh, onto the paralyzed chi yu the next turn so you've got that para flinch combination the paralyzed uh, chance you've got one and four and then the flinch chance that you've got with the waterfall on top of that knowing that you're going to be going first and on top of that you can bring in his flutter main which is going to also threaten that Chi Yu right now on the field that is paralyzed. And a full paralysis here would be pretty devastating for the Chi Yu, but I quite like the uh, the speed interactions here. We know that the Chi Yu from game one was faster than the Gyarados. Now it's not because of that uh, Thunder Wave, and the Gyarados gets the opportunity to now taunt first into that Amoongus. Yeah, and that's the big thing. I think you can keep that Amoongus in check and then protect your Flutter main because offensively, uh, Amoongus really doesn't cause any any threat to your side of the field if you're Joaquin, whereas you've got the offensive threat, you've got that taunt, you can keep that Amoongus in check and you can do the damage that you need to to the dark types on, next to it, you know? Well, <laughs> unless that Amoongus goes <laughs> for a side Pollen Puff and heals it up. Uh, you know, we've seen a couple of side Pollen Puffs coming out and not uh, not actually healing any HP, but this is... This is what it's all about that pollen puff uh, coming out onto the Ting Lu here and it's with that leftovers recovery just shy of going right back up to full yeah and that is a huge amount of HP that the Ting Lu gets you know it, it's such a defensively well built Pokemon can take a number of attacks and to get its HP kind of put back up to nearly full and yeah just remove all of that damage that's done before it is it just feels like a, a real uphill climb for uh, Joaquin at this stage of the match. He has got access to the Heavy Slam, so the mm -hmm. Flutterman is pretty threatened here if that is the option. Um, and it is going to be able to take an attack from the Flutterman in return. But we do see an adjustment. We see the Gyarados switched out from Joaquin and the King Gambit hit the field as we see the Flutterman go for a Protect. Stopping Ooh. Tantrum though. A big what call a read. into that King Gambit and getting some nice damage off there into that what was Gyarados slot, now the King Gambit. And I like the double up there, the clear smog going into the King Gambit that was a Gyarados, knowing that Gyarados is one of the key Pokemon that Luca has to remove from the field. Because you've got that Ting Lu, that's going to be stopping Fluttermane doing too much damage, uh, or as much damage, should I say. Uh, and it, you've got that heavy slam that you can knock it out. But Gyarados is a Pokemon that, you know, even though it's taken quite a lot of damage in this match so far you've still got to commit several attacks to it to be able to knock it out 
Yeah, and I think that's the big thing. You've got to, to really commit to, to that Pokemon to remove it from the field, and I mm. think that's the problem that you're kind of faced with here. Uh, the thing, Lou, like as we've mentioned, it is keeping the Flutterman in check, and I love the fact that even if the Gyarados stayed on the field there, the next turn that Stomping Tantrum with how the, 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 oh, yeah. how it works, it would be double damage. So there was nothing really to lose knowing that, oh, well, if the Gyarados stays in, I'll just yeah. get double damage Stomping Tantrum the next turn, and that'll be enough to pick up the, the, the Flutterman and it can't switch out into that King Gambit because that would be enough to get it anyway. That would be such a cool thing to see and a really nice call out there as we see a Protect on the Ting Lu coming out here as well as the uh, Chi Yu, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, two attacks coming out from King Gambit, low kick and the attack from Fluttermane going into that Protect. So no damage on the Ting Lu. Uh, this turn it is back very nicely to full health, but this Chi Yu joining the field is going to be putting a lot of pressure onto that King Gambit. Yeah, definitely. And I think the thing that you, you're kind of identifying here from Luca is that if you, you're going to want to keep that Ting Lu on the field next to that Amoongus, you need that Rage Powder support just mm. so that double up isn't something that you have to really consider because potentially that is going to be enough, the, the low kick and the, the, the Moon Blast. But opting this turn, Joaquin Ooh. going for the Moon Blast into the Chi Yu with the follow up of the Assurance, not enough oh. onto the Chi Yu. The heavy slam coming out from the Tinglu. Going to pick up the knockout onto the Flutterman, leaving the Chiyu open to fire off a heat wave. And will it be enough to pick up the knockout onto the King Gambit? It it's is going to connect. Hit, and it's not <laughs> quite enough. The King Gambit just hanging on because of that ability on the Tinglu, which is really not been as helpful as uh, you'd kind of want it to be right now. Well, actually, there was also a cheeky little special attack drop there from the Moonblast that came on. That's the reason that this King Gambit has lived to tell the tale, Again, uh, so to speak. Too <laughs> <much>. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, we need to look at the game, not into each other's yes. eyes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, as we see the Ting Lu going for another Protect here. Yeah, going for that Protect. We are going to see the Taunt come out from the Gyarados into the Chi. You may be suspecting that the Amoongus is going to come in on that slot uh, to support that Ting Lu to help close this game out. Um, and... Yeah, the, 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 this, I think that it makes sense, but we are going to see uh, just another heat wave come out. It is going to pick up the King Gambit this turn and pretty much seal up the game for Luca and only the Gyarados now to deal with. A parallel from game one where only the Gyarados was remaining on the field and it had a, a little bit of an uphill battle uh, in that game. The same is true this game. Definitely would be able to knock out the Chi Yu if Luca allowed it, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just not going to be able to do the damage that it needs to both Ting Lu, uh, Chi Yu, and this Amoongus as well, because, you know, even the little small amounts of damage that Amoongus can do will be enough at this stage of the game. Yeah, we've seen already how much the, the, t the small amount of chip that the Clear Smog does. You're only going to need to ha get a, a couple of those off with, along with these heavy slams, and the Gyarados doesn't have any way to have a recover, um, whereas the, the Amoongus now can top up that Ting Lu whenever it mm. wants with the, the Pollen Puff. So, I mean, you can just concentrate down with these heavy slams and you're really relying at this point on these waterfalls flinching at this point, which we do <laughs> see, fortunately, doing some big damage. But again, like you say, the clear spawn going to be enough to finally chip it down and the Gyarados really doesn't have enough in the tank to take down that Amoongus with just waterfalls. Uh, not at all. And yeah, it's just going to be a slow end to uh, this battle where, you know, Hukin doing everything possible uh, in their capabilities to stay in this match, but Luca playing so expertly, getting all of the, uh, using all of the Pokemon at his disposal to get that knockout, and it's the Amoongus getting the final knockout. Luca will be going 7 2 and getting into day two Swiss at the Turin special event. An amazing finish to day one here, and a massive congratulations to both our competitors. Big congratulations to Luca, who piloted the team and just made that game extremely difficult for Joaquin to get any sort of momentum in that game, utilizing and uh, quite fitting that the Amoongus was the last Pokemon to close <laughs> out that match because of how uh, pivotal it was for Luca in both of those games. Even if it wasn't able to go for the spores and the Rage Powder that it's so well known for, just having the opportunity to go for Clear Smog, which is something that we've seen actually quite a lot today, and just keeping that Iron Hands, especially in game two, under pressure, uh, yeah. both in the terms of the damage that it's doing, but also stopping that sword stance from really running away with the match. Yeah, because you feel at that point, uh, Joaquin really was able to 
expertly identify situations where he could get that sword stance off. Right. Put himself in a great position. He protected it when he needed to at exactly the right times. Um, but the fact is that Luca was able to utilize that clear smog. Um, it's not a move that's affected by taunt, which is the big issue. Exactly. Uh, and you can fire it off any time. And I think that's the trouble, keeping the Amoongus on the field. It's not really threatened even by uh, an Iron Hands that has got those sword stances. So just the pretty the best answer. And I think the way that Luca protected it throughout that game mm. really made it difficult for Joaquin to get any momentum like kind of he was wanting to do and like he was setting up to do. He just couldn't really get that final step over the line uh, right and 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 such a great call there because yeah the the setup happened the the iron hands in game two got the sword stance it did a lot of work and we saw how uh, impactful the terror was with being able to you know dispatch of the other iron hands on lucas side of the field but it was kind of like left in a position where it just didn't have enough health left when that chi Yu came back in yeah and that's a problem, I think, with the Chi Yu as well. Outspeeding the Gyarados, it made it difficult. I think you needed that one extra turn where you were able to maybe paralyze the Chi Yu before yeah. it was able to get the Heat Wave off. And then maybe the, the match would have been a bit different because you could have went for the Drain Punch at that stage into the Chi Yu and got a little bit of health back with your Iron Hands and maybe went on from there. But again, it always comes back to how was Joaquin going to deal with that Amoongus? Yeah. It didn't really feel like he had a massively good convincing answer to that. Maybe the King Gambit it was something that you had in mind. We can double up into it with the assurance, something else, um, and maybe that would be enough to put it in range to, to deal with it. But I think that the, the taunt only stopped it so much. It didn't. Right. It kind of half stopped it, where it was able to kind of top up the Ting Lu's health when we saw that come in. And you think Ting Lu's such a such a bulky Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. I, I've done all this damage to. I've done half the work. I just need to do the other half. And now, oh, uh, all that work I did do is just just, just got undone. So, got to start again. And, I, <laughs> and I've lost half of my team as well in the process. And I yeah. think that's testament to how well Luca played that match and really made it difficult for Joaquin at every single angle there. Um, yeah, and not having an answer for the Amoongus, I think it was I, the big thing. This is it. And I mean, the, the answer that I saw, at least for the Amoongus, was that Chi Yu. And it would have been interesting to have a little bit of a Chi Yu mirror between these two players. But I think the way that Luca played it made it very difficult for Hooking to really bring the Chi Yu, especially with that Ting Lu. Uh, you know, not carrying the assault vest, which is you know something that's usually really good into those things. Instead, carrying the leftovers, keeping that health ticking up, and being able to protect on key turns makes it quite difficult to bring a Chi Yu because you only need really kind of one or two turns maybe to hit it with damage, and then it gets knocked out and. Yeah. Hey, you don't have an answer to Amoongus anymore. Yeah, and it is that problem. And, it, and maybe that is the reason why we didn't see it brought into that match because of the... I think the nice thing about the Gyarados in that game was we can see how difficult it was to take down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when yeah, you've got yeah, super yeah. effective Pokemon around it, maybe, you know, the Iron Hands and things like that, it was still the last Pokemon both games uh, to go down. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you, would, you would presume the opposite with the Chi Yu. And if, yes. you, if you don't get those turns precisely right and get some return for your Chi Yu, it's, it's, it's essentially a wasted slot, especially if you're bringing it as your answer to Amoongus. Can you time the, the move right? Can you right. get it right? Can you take down the Amoongus? Because if you don't, then like you've mentioned, it's not really worth bringing. And that's probably the reason why, uh, because of the item choices and other factors in this match. And you mentioned a wasted slot. Uh, uh, and you just cannot, at this caliber of uh, player, this stage in the tournament, you can't have a wasted uh, slot anywhere on your team. If you bring a Pokemon that's not really carrying its weight, then uh, you're going to have a tough time because the players at this caliber, especially playing in Turin with all of the uh, Italian players that are so, so good at VGC, they're just going to punish you for every every uh, little weakness in your team. Yeah, and I think I, we've seen throughout the day today, you know, the, the effect that maybe not moving on one single turn has an effect because of how yeah. close these matches are. Whereas if you're taking an entire Pokemon out of the equation, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. the effect on that is is really detrimental to you as a player. So you really want everything pulling in the same direction, everything contributing, everything giving you a return on what you've brought to the battlefield. And you can see why Joaquin probably made the decisions he did. I just feel like he probably, outside of that Chiyu, didn't really have anything else to help 
effectively deal with the Amoongus. And I think Luca are identifying that from the mm. get-go and mm. really exploiting that. Um, especially when he didn't see the Chi as an option from Joaquin's side of the field. It made it very easy to um, utilize the Amoongus to its full potential. And I think we really got to see it in that game. I think so too. And, uh, you know, uh, we've got to talk a little bit about the Iron Hands as well, because yeah. he piloted it so, so well. I mean, it, it, it's like a, a kind of old thing and, and certainly something that we've got experience with uh, playing many years of VGC where, uh, you know, you have a fake out Pokemon in the field. <laughs> Guess what? It's not going for fake out. It's going to be switching out. Maybe it's going to be going, as we saw, for a Volt Switch and just maintaining that momentum because if you can bring the threat of fake out multiple turns in a row, that's effectively doing what you were saying earlier one wasted turn one turn where you don't move because you're defending yourself from something like yeah. a fake out it's a really big detriment yeah and i think the ability for luca to kind of play the iron hands like he did like you say was masterfully done uh, it, it really just kept the pressure at a certain level where joaquin wasn't able to really freely do anything that he essentially wanted to. I mean, mm. he positioned himself a little bit better in game two, he was able to get the sword stance up and, and utilize the Iron Hands, which I think you identified going into that game two as the Pokemon that would cause uh, Luca a lot more problems. And it turned out, of course, it, that was the case. But once that Iron Hands went down, uh, it was uh, uh, it was kind of the same story from game one. Uh, but the, the fact is, like you say, having just the options, especially in an open team sheet format, it's yeah. sometimes enough to do the job that you kind of put it on there to do in the first place without actually needing to click on that move, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, it's uh, it's the threat of having something like Rage Powder from the Amoongus. I yeah. mean, it sits on the field there. Does it go for Rage Powder? Uh, does it protect and then let the partner do something and you target into the Amoongus? All of these mind games are definitely in effect in yeah. uh, such tense matches between two really good trainers. Or if your name is Ben Kiriakou and it's not open team sheets, you don't <laughs> even play Rage Powder and you play something like Substitute instead. <laughs> that was... Uh, that was a good year. If, you, if, you, if you're if you not aware of this, uh, this is the Amoongus that I played in 2013, uh, way, way, way back in the day. Uh, Black Sludge and Substitute, no Rage Powders whatsoever. And that's how long uh, Amoongus has been good. But <laughs> enough about Amoongus. We can hear from Luca. He is ready with an interview with Simon now. So we're going to throw it over to the couch and hear some insights from Luca. Yes, trainers, I'm here joined with Luca, who just won the round nine as well, got his day two. How are you feeling right now? Well, I'm feeling very great. Like, uh, obviously, uh, uh, this whole uh, event has been a roller coaster, obviously, with like the two hours, yeah. round four. Uh, every time, like, I bounce back from like 1-1, one, one, then I got 6-1, then, yeah. then I lost the, the last round, and then I was feeling so nervous. I was feeling, uh, to, uh, to be honest, uh, quite angry because I I got pretty lucky, but yeah. uh, luckily this time I was able to clinch this out uh, yeah. uh, and get the day two. Also, like, this is like the fourth time I make day two in yeah. uh, this year, and they've all been in the last round, I had to win the last round, and I always won those. Like, okay. so I'm very happy with my 100% win rate in the last round. Yeah, last so, round. <laughs> uh, obviously, I I would pre I would prefer in the coming tournaments to be able to uh, clinch the the, the, the earlier invitation yeah. quite uh, like earlier than yeah. earlier. So I can. I mean, a 100% win rate in last round. That's quite impressive to say the least as well. Uh, yeah, that match was quite amazing to watch because you had both had like similar teams, just a few key differences. What do you feel like uh, uh, made the game a bit more towards your end of the run? Because I feel personally, I really liked the switches you made uh, with the Volt Switch, especially with the Iron Hands, just keeping your opponent on his toes really what do you think was the play there for you yeah uh, because the point was uh, uh, like you see uh, most of the times like uh, iron hands on my side just puts uh, in puts so much pressure because there's uh, like there's the gardos which takes yeah. which d dies to to well charge yeah. there's a uh, chiu that obviously doesn't not doesn't appreciate um, any dream punch so does uh, king gambit and uh, still Flutterman can switch in, but yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't like it also. So 
obviously uh, Irons is very good into this matchup and he also forces a lot of switch outs. So uh, most of the times, like if I if you use ball switch, also yeah. because we saw I saw that uh, my Irons was lower than his. It yeah. always meant that uh, my Irons was the last uh, was the last moon to uh, move. So yeah. the ball switch will always put uh, uh, the best Pokemon there because it will the, I will send in the Pokemon at the very end well, of the, the turn, end, yeah. and so I will I will have all the time to um, figure out which is the best Pokemon to send in, yeah. and also like. Uh, since I'm yeah. slower than the other uh, than the other uh, Iron Ants, I can soak up some damage and yeah. then send in the other Pokemon unarmed. Yeah, unharmed indeed. And the thing that I found really f uh, fun to see as well, uh, the switching was really good. But as well, the fake the fake out of the fake outs, not really using fake out, just immediately. Okay, I have the possibility of fake out, so the Iron Ants can detect, so can protect. But immediately you are like, nah, just. Ball switch, like he's gonna protect. Yeah, most of the times, like uh, even if they don't protect, it's better to have a better position than uh, uh, like by a turn. If you're yeah. not, if you're not getting something out of it, most of the times it's not useful to use fake out. Yeah, it's something that you will uh, obviously uh, that I learned a lot while using Incineroar that. Most of the times, you just click the repositioning move because yeah. it's just so broken. You just get it's to really send good. in the, the best Pokemon in the situation rather than like use fake out yeah. in those kind of dead turns when you uh, yeah, yeah you could get some something out of it. But most of the times, like you risk your opponent switching out uh, a Pokemon yeah. and then like completely changing the board positioning. Especially like when you play against Flutterman, you don't want yeah. Flutterman to enter there for free, especially like. So having Voltage there is yeah. best. Just a bit of chip because damage. Every time that yeah. it sends in Flutterman, I just send in Tinglu and then yeah. it has. It's, it's yeah, very. It, it's been very effective as we saw. Yeah, especially after because after a first out, the. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, quite impressive. The Tinglu especially was impressive to have because Amoongus next to Tinglu, just being able to pollen puff and pollen puff was quite well. Free healthcare. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Also, like uh, the point is, I think Assault Vest is uh, is the optimal set on Tinglu, but yeah. obviously I have that on on Iron Hands, so yeah. uh, Tinglu has to compromise and and have like leftovers. I don't think it's uh, it's the greatest item, but yeah. in this matchup uh, it really did uh, well because uh, most of the times um, my opponent has to. Um, Force me, to force me to Terra Tinglu and then yeah. like uh, spam Thunder Waves, uh, spam like uh, something plus Asturans on, yeah, on it. Yeah. But since I have the Protect, most of the times I just need to take it slow, send yeah. in Amoongus and Protect. Because at the point I do not need to Terra Stylize uh, Tinglu and then I can keep it for later. And I can uh, keep my opponent guessing whether I eat Terra or not. Yeah, that's the game a bit, like waiting around, making sure that protect uh, when to use your Terra and I feel like you use that absolutely optimally you did so well is there during this day today because this event has been quite long as well has there been any other opponents where you were quite struggling against um well technically yes like I thought I used a lot of uh, Iron in this uh, and Tinglu in these yeah. uh, types of uh, in matches today, like I faced uh, a couple of mirrors, yeah. also, and I think uh, sometimes uh, the mirrors it's either decided uh, if you wanna go fast with uh, Flutterman to you uh, and such, and then just whoever whoever uh, is faster with Flutterman gets to uh, Moonblast something, and it, all everything dies, or you have to take it slower with the Tinglu approach. Uh, since uh, uh, like uh, most of the times, like I faced uh, yeah. uh, Specs Flutterman's, yeah. I. Like I had to guess, like they were like teammates, so I always assumed I was lower. So in the, in those times, like you have, even if if it gets kind of boring sometimes, you say I have to uh, keep it uh, slow. I have to yeah. play with uh, Ting Lu, I have to play with Ireland and so on. You get you play a bit slower, but you wait your right moment to strike, so to say. And yeah, congrats again because you have made day two now four times in a row, uh, four times already of previous events. Have you been to many events before this season? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I've been playing this game since uh, 2017, and actually, 
and my first major event in uh, the master in the master yeah. uh, division was uh, right here, right in Turin, and I was able to win uh, like seven seven years ago when yeah. I was 14. So being able to uh, come back here yeah. and uh, maybe uh, not have uh, a smooth sailing as uh, last time, but yeah. being able to uh, make the two and still get to fight to defend my title is exactly. so great for me. And it really feels, uh, uh, really uh, means a lot to me. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Like you being able to come back, see the uh, good thing do at least it's not over yet tomorrow you have a full day of uh, five rounds of more Swiss and possibly a top eight as well are you are you ready for tomorrow I have to be ready uh, tomorrow it will be uh, definitely uh, very very difficult uh, uh, the stakes are higher uh, are higher higher so it's very the the level just ramp, keeps ramping up, ramping up. But obviously, I have to be prepared. And tomorrow, I hope I can. I'll be able to show it. All right, that's great to hear. I'm happy to hear that. Is there anyone you want to say hi to? Some friends or family? Oh, well, here we go. Like uh, we're gonna be here <laughs> like five minutes. Obviously, <laughs> um, um, I obviously uh, the first one I want to uh, say hi to, say thanks to is my family for supporting me. Uh, after that, uh, all my group of friends who have always been there for me, uh, there are really too many, I'll try to uh, sum it up <laughs> a little. Obviously, um, the friends of the server uh, and um, the friends uh, I, I'm rooming with, are rooming with uh, today and yeah. so like uh, uh, Gizo, Euge and uh, Pokesan. So uh, I'll see you to, I'll see you there. <laughs> Let's, uh, I, I'll probably I'll just pull back asleep once I get back there. Yeah, absolutely. I get it completely. So that's it for today. That is for now. We will be back very soon because we have the final standings, of course, that we have to reveal as well. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And we will be back shortly. Don't, so don't go anywhere just yet.